together. Hallelujah. How many of us know his name is great? Hallelujah. How many of us know that? How many of us know his name is great and worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, amen, but when you don't know what else to do, amen, and if you ever had your back up against the wall and and you didn't know what to do, amen. I have an answer and a remedy for everybody that's ever been like that. Or you may be like that right now. Your back is up against the wall. You really don't know what to do. The Bible gives us an answer when you've done, done all you know how to do, amen, and don't know what else to do. The Bible says stand, amen. And after doing all you can do to stay, say stand some more. And then after you do that, you just tell him hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise that you can give God. So in the midst of whatever it is that you may be dealing with, if you would just go ahead and say hallelujah, give God what's due him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worth. Did he bring you? See, some folk didn't know how they was going to come out. And some folk worried if they're going to come out. But I want you to touch yourself and say, self, you're already out. Hey, hey. You got to believe that, amen. I'm already out, hallelujah, and, and, and I see myself doing better, amen. Does anybody see themselves doing better, amen? Mm -hmm. I am better, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, amen, but I will not allow my circumstances to dictate to me how I will worship God and why I feel about my future. Because my future is secure. All I got to do is stay on the king's highway. Tell somebody, say, stay on the king's highway. Lose your attitude, amen, and know that God is able to turn anything around, amen. I think a lot of times it is our attitude that will uh, deflate our, our latitude, amen. It's the attitude that we have with each other and with God, amen. And 90% and, uh, of what we're going through, amen, I've told you before, and I'll take the liberty to say it again, the devil ain't doing everything that we say he's doing, amen. Uh, some, some things God just allowing in your life. Say that again, Pastor. I believe a will. Everything ain't the devil. Some things God just allowing to happen in your life, amen, so that he can get your attention. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. Tonight, I don't want to just drag things out, amen. Uh, this, this was sent to me via, amen, over my uh, uh, internet, amen, and uh, I promise, I promise you this, amen. amen. If you won't move for about the next, next seven minutes, minutes and pay, 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 pay real, real good attention. attention. Somebody, Somebody say pay, pay real, real good attention. attention. This young lady is going to bless your heart with what she has. Put your iPad, iPad down, down. Put your Bible, Bible down, down for a second, a second amen. amen. And pay, pay attention to this young lady, lady amen, amen, for about, somebody, somebody say seven minutes. Amen. amen. So for seven minutes, if you would put your mind and look at the screens in front of you and listen, amen. It blessed my heart. And uh, I had to even write a post on it, amen, it touched me so. So I want you to just listen, amen, to somebody say the jigaboo. Yeah, you listen at the jigaboo. I hope we ain't got, I hope we ain't got no jigaboos in our church, amen, because she's talking about these folk that jigaboos, amen. And I sure don't want to have none of them hanging around him. You know, you don't want the truth. Say they say a jigaboo, they don't want the truth. Amen, I ask your neighbor, say neighbor. You're not a jigaboo, are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Could we run that? Could we run that clip, sound man, back there? Could we? Could we pump? Could we pump that up in the house? Turn to your neighbor and tell them to listen to this poem. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them to listen to this poem. What has happened to us, church? Why do we do what every person that stands behind the mic says without investigating the fruit first? The truth hurts, but I'm here to slice you up with a sword, mangle into poetic words so that we can start being real Christians again instead of jigaboos. Yeah, I said it, jigaboos. People with a holy facade like a white face painted over their negro colored heart, sitting in the back of their busted insides, tap dancing, shouting, and singing for human praises like our ancestors who did it for quarters, nickels, and dimes. You are still enslaved, church. Instead of getting excited about the glory of God, we'd rather be entertained like human iPods, touched by everything that makes love to our five senses. 
If it looks, smells, tastes, feels, sounds right, it must be right, just right, wrong. Just because you feel singly on the inside with someone is singing or speaking just like your heart is bleeding pop rocks doesn't mean that they're anointed. It just means that you're emotionally inclined to base reality on how you feel instead of the truth. When you go to the grocery store and pick up a piece of fruit, you examine it to see if it's rotten, right? You smell it, turn it around in your hands, press your fingers against its skin to see if it's ripe. But even though we are called to do the same thing that every person that stands behind a mic and claims to speak on behalf of God, we don't because of our need to be entertained. Instead of the need for our flesh to be beaten up in Maine, we continue to sit back and eat rotten fruit. When will we stop buying preachers that are expired? But if you don't study to show yourself approved, it makes perfect sense for you to approve of any and every fool that preaches heresy, sprinkle with a little truth, because sound teaching doesn't seem to matter anymore as long as he can preach good, right? Hand gripping the mic, screaming into the crowd, breathing all hard in between every word, like he's having a heart attack, organists and drummers already in position to play the soundtrack of this spectacle that we want to call worship. But even Apostle Paul said that his preaching was plain and void of clever and persuasive words so the listener's faith would not be based on human wisdom but in the power of God. What is happening to us, church? There are preachers and prophets in the pulpits profiting off prophecies that profit me? Nothing. No correction, no rebuke, no call to repentance, just a new house, a new call, more blessings and even more reasons not to submit and you wonder why your ears can't stop itching. Because your body has been infected with sin and Jesus Christ is your prescription. But instead of you cleaning out the old man residue with Q-tips covered in conviction, producing repentance, you rather hide behind your old Negro spiritual worship songs because you can't stand the master's whippings. These men, these men have pasted cotton balls over their gray fur to fool the masses. Matter of fact, some of them are your pastors. You think they are sheep and inside they are ravenous wolves with evil eyes skinning the faith of the saints with their teeth. Don't blame the wolf for biting its prey, little red riding hoods. You're the one that lets your discernment cease. I hear more about me being the head and not the tail, being above and not beneath than I do about the exegesis of Jesus. These preachers are feeding us Dr. Phil sermons disguised as truth. Oprah Winfrey philosophies. How many of you actually believe you can speak things into existence? Yet when I search the scriptures, I see that that was a power that belonged to God and God alone. They say, I speak call you say I receive they say I speak healing you say I receive God says die to yourself <laughs> silence it's crazy how the highest praise is only sent up when our flesh is getting pleased what happened to our flesh getting weak what happened to us sincerely falling to our knees and asking the Lord to show us the parts of us that make him want to heave but we'd rather throw up our hands and puke out unknown tongues without an interpreter to even tell us what spiritual door the tongues broke through from I'm done holding my tongue I'm sick of biting my lip no wonder Unbelievers can't see the truth like Stevie staring at the results of a lie detector test because without order and the church the blind stay bound and confused and as long as the body of Christ continues to live like walking flashbacks of Amistad and roots those with spiritual blindfolds choking the death out of their souls will never be able to see God because the one being exalted is you. But my God will not be mocked again for you. He became a slave for you, beaten and maimed for you, whipped at least 41 times with lead tips ripping into the back of the creator of skin. His holiness colored with your sin and they drink from the water fountain of God's wrath that is hasted as hateful as a cup full of Jim Crow and until you die on a cross for all of mankind. No human being on planet earth will ever understand true segregation like the son experienced when he felt forsaken. Christ died so you could be a new creation so loose yourself from that noose saturated in religion. Are you listening? You are unknowingly dangling from the tree of the Pharisees, but even the Pharisees saw that going backwards and forwards like a sea saw would only give more room for God's light to expose their hearts. So choose which side you will be on because no one can serve two masters. In 1865, the 13th Amendment proclaimed that slavery shall no longer exist in the United States. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ's death abolished our spiritual shackles and chains, but too many of us have gotten comfortable with our religious traditions and superstitions that we remain enslaved while still proclaiming that we are free. Many of you don't even realize your jigaboos. People with a Christian personality oblivious to your slave mentality. Even Harriet Tubman was quoted in saying, I freed a thousand slaves and I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. 
So, instead of tap dancing and shouting to the beat of your own drum, get on your knees, put your face to the ground where all you can see, hear, taste, and smell is repentance and belief. And all you can feel is a spirit of God, million man, marching you into an underground railroad, not filled with those that have been trained. But those of us who are willing to discard our religious chains and trade in our quarters, nickels, and dimes for true change because our savior is here and he has came to set the captives free. Oh, come on, put our hands together. Amen. Now ask your neighbor again. Say, neighbor, you ain't no jigaboo, are you? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if, if we really listen to her, amen, how, how many of us really know the state of the church, we're in bad shape? Yeah, the state, of, the state of the church, I was talking with the pastor today, you know, it's sad when we can't get along in the body of Christ. Musicians can't get along with one another. Choir members can't get along with one another. You know, uh, uh, pastors can't even get along with one another. And we're talking about we're going to advance the kingdom of God. There's no way in the world we're going to advance anything because we ain't dead yet. Amen. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. We, 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 we are mad with each other. Amen. And we're supposed to be in love with one another and trying to help one another. But instead of trying to do that, amen, we let everything upset us. You know, we're mad about everything. Can't nobody say nothing. We can't get rebuked no more for sure. Can't nobody tell you you ain't acting right or you ain't doing right. Because the minute folks start telling you that, they're trying to control you. Amen. And ain't nobody going to control me. Amen. I'm going to just do me. And everybody that just want to do me, I'm telling you, I, I, I said it when I preached the funeral, funeral uh, Saturday. That, that everybody in the game, amen, wind up getting played if you stay in the game long enough. I'll say that again. Everybody in the game, I wish I had a witness. If you stay in the game long enough, you're going to get played. And, and I know you don't think you are, but you ain't going to sell dope all your life and don't go to prison. You just ain't going to do that. You can ride high on 30-inch rims with bowl, bowling ball paint, smoking blunts and sipping gin. You better enjoy it now because I see you in your future and you're in an 8 by 10. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I ain't saying nothing, bro. I ain't messing with nobody. I'm just saying we're going to keep it 100 in church. You ain't playing. Please, no music. You ain't, you ain't playing the game, and the game don't wind up playing you. I don't, John Gotti ain't now a drug dealer I know big as John Gotti, and he dies in prison. See, he got away for a long time, and I don't care what nobody say. I don't want to be an old man dying alone in prison with nobody around me that loved me. You might have enjoyed your whole entire life. But your last days were in a cell, 8 by 10, and with nobody around you that loved you. So my question would be, is the gain worth it? Was it worth it to have everything you wanted to gain the whole world and die and lose your soul? You know? The game, I, I said this too. The game don't love nobody. I don't know who think the game love them, but the game don't love nobody. It really doesn't. All of us who are in here who heard her talk about the church, amen. She's a young woman too, amen. And, and no doubt in my mind, uh, she can't be no old 19, 20, you know, right up in there just running it down. You know what I mean? How we jump and shout and run in church. And, and, and after we done jumped, shout, ran, and clapped and hot, and my mama say, you done told us the same things you just done said like she said it on that TV right there. But after we done high-fived our neighbor and kicked our neighbor and ran around the church and laid up here and we done wrap you up like a mummy, amen. And you done, and, and yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I said it, mm-hmm. Yeah, we done wrap you up like you just coming out of King Touch tomb and you spin right out of that like a spinning top and you still mean, you still hateful, you still don't know how to submit yourself, you still mad and angry about everything. How can it, you know what, church is not a place of entertainment. I'm going to tell the musicians and all that. Because I was talking with a musician who's a professional musician, writing songs and making CDs and all that. He say, Pastor Hall, let me tell you what I got to do. He said, I got to forget about this new thing that's going on now. He said, I'm going to make me another CD. He said, I'm going strictly old school. He said, because this new stuff, we have, we have letting the world creep in the church. Yeah, the world in here. The world in here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
The world has crept into the church, amen, and instead of us really giving God true worship, we're manufacturing something. And we're calling it worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People are looking for something different when they come to church. If, if, if we were rocking and doing the same stuff they were doing in the club when they come to the church, them folk going to say, well, what I'm coming here for? I, I came here because I'm looking for something different. And y'all rocking hard and we rocking in the club. Taking music, which was created for God. And you do know that, right? I, don't hope, I hope, hope nobody here don't think that music was created for Satan. Music was not created for Satan. In the beginning of time, Lucifer, the archangel, was the music director in heaven. Music was made for God. Holy music. Now, music made it into the world when Satan got kicked out of heaven. And now music has become just as corrupt as anything. And if you really listen to a lot of the stuff that we're singing, talking about the church too, how many songs really mention the name of Jesus? It's a, he's a noun and a pronoun. You know, he and you and, you know, and all that type of stuff. They don't want to say the name Jesus. Yeah, come on now. Amen. But if you put the name Jesus, see, see Jesus won't sell at the club too tough. You know, I, I can't be making love and you talking about Jesus on the tape. Tell y'all something as I take my message. This is a, just a testimony right here is that if the church don't soon get themselves together and people, I'm talking musicians, preachers and all, all of us who are calling ourselves in the fivefold ministry. God is not playing. And the end of time is right now. I'm telling everybody this. Young people are dying. So people who think they're young and I can act like I want to, I can do whatever I want to do. There's plenty of short graves in the cemetery. Plenty of short ones. And you know what? Young people think they're going to live forever. You know, like these young guys, all these are young fellas. Ain't nobody over the age of 21. All them young. Amen. And, and young folk, amen, they, they, they bad, notorious about thinking that they don't need to get themselves together. You know, I can just come to church and play. And this is not a game. You ever notice, and I'm not, I'm not beating up on the musicians or nothing right now, but you ever notice how many musicians have a Bible when it's time to, to preach? How many musicians have a Bible and be reading? How many drummers do you know? As you watch what's going on on the platform and preaching is going on, how many of them got a Bible in their hand? And I'm not saying that to beat up on nobody, but it's the truth. Do you know most praise singers and musicians, really what they're there for to do is do their part, and after they're done, whatever's happening after that, they turn it off? It's the truth. This is the truth. And that's, that's no reflection. That's overall. We just come to do our thing. When our thing is over, do your thing, and we out. Ain't learned nothing, ain't growing, no conviction. Uh, if I needed to repent, I won't. If I need to go tell somebody I'm sorry, I won't. Why? Because I didn't hear nothing. Bishop Kelly said this. <laughs> if y'all remember Bishop Kelly from North Dakota. Bishop Kelly said, you know, when he would come to town, the musicians wouldn't even show up. He said, I fire them. He said they would play for the revival. Get up after they done played for praise and worship. And leave. There's a lot of musicians I've seen do that though. Can I tell y'all something else to notice? Put on any program. Put on a dance or a praise and worship thing. Put on a musical. And after the group that, that is dancing get through, they leave. Except they got one or two other people in a group that they really like. They'll hang around. But normally when the group get, they, it, when they choir get through singing or the people that they like get through, they hit the dough. Do you know what they're saying? It's all about me. I've performed and I've done my thing. I'm gone. Just watch it. I'm just, I'm just telling you what I see. I don't know if nobody else see that or not. You know what I mean? This is not the, this is not the, this is not the Apollo. This is not talent hour. Who can play the keyboard the best? Who the best drummer? Who can sing the best? It's not about that. It's about us coming here and trying to get closer to God, being taught how to live in this world, you know, how to treat your family, how to be a real man, you know what I'm saying, how to be a wife and not a woman. I'm going to say that again, how to be a wife and not just a female, you know, how to honor your husband, 
even if he ain't the husband that you so desire even right now, but you married him, so you got to kind of hang in there and pray with him and fast with him till he can get to where you really want him to be. I ain't say nothing right there. I spoke in tongues. I ain't say nothing. Father, we thank you tonight and we give you praise as I speak for you from the word. I pray that you would word my mouth even now. We thank you for the young lady who just spoke into our hearts to be our inspirational speaker tonight. I'm inspired, God. I'm so thankful that I'm not a jigaboo. I'm so thankful that I love the truth and that I can be rebuked and I can apologize and I can go make peace with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Father, word my mouth now. Use me in this place. Have your way in me and through me. I bind every demonic spirit, every stronghold, and every hindering spirit. Give us a spirit of forgiveness, O oh God. Give us a spirit of love. Help everyone in here to pay attention that after hearing the word of God, our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. How you feel? Feel good? Amen. I want to ask a question. How many people here know of somebody that you really need to go apologize to and you haven't went yet? Hmm? How many people here really know that? Okay, I see a few. I mean, you know you do. You know you need to go and apologize to them, but you haven't done it yet. Well, can I give you some helpful advice? Do it before it's too late. Yeah, go, go get it right with them. You know, don't, don't let another moment, if, if they're in this building before you leave tonight, do not leave here without giving them a formal ap apology. Because let me tell you something, without the release of an apology, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Because if you're not willing to forgive and apologize and make it right, then every time you have went up to the Lord in prayer and throwing all those prayers up into heaven, God said, no, go be reconciled back to your brother. Pick up your gift and then come back and talk to me. You know what I'm saying? So I would not leave tonight. You got a cell phone. We get out of church. You call them people. Amen. I was, I was leaving. I wrote somebody here and I was telling them, do y'all really understand how powerful words are? I'm talking to even to you guys up here. Do y'all understand how powerful words are? When you say stuff out of your mouth to your mom, your dad, to the pastor, to each other, how powerful words are and how they can hurt. And when they hurt people, we act like as if we ain't done nothing. We can just walk on top of folk and it don't even bother us. But see, God is not in that. Let me tell you something. You're not weak because you go and apologize. You're not weak because you tell people you're sorry. Because a lot of times we, we weren't raised in a home where we saw sorry exemplified. I'm going to say that again. Most of us were raised in dysfunctional homes where we didn't see a father go and apologize or come to us and apologize. We never saw, matter of fact, some of us come out of our home where the mama was the mama and the daddy. Amen. And therefore, when I was raised in a house like that, when I get a man, I wants to run everything. Y'all ain't saying that I can't even get no claps right there. Amen. But it's the truth anyway. Hallelujah. When, when your mama was your mama and your daddy in the house, now when you get a husband, you wonder why you can't seem to humble yourself up under the man because you were raised in an atmosphere where you was all of that. And it's hard for you to adjust. But once you get a husband, ladies, amen, he is your head. You do no longer have the last word in the house. And I know we won't get a whole lot of claps right there, but that's okay because I'm not preaching to please you all. Amen. I'm here to tell you the truth. When you take on a husband, whatever your husband say, that closes everything down, right? <laughs> and everybody that with the spirit, that's why you can't seem to wonder why things won't get together for us in jail like we really wanted to. Because with that type of a spirit, amen, God cannot he cannot do anything for you, amen, like he should. When we come to church and bring these nasty attitudes on the platform, and that's another thing, you're bringing nasty spirits with you. The, the, the music can't even seem to get together. The, same, the praise team can't seem to sing together. Why? Because there's too much alt and too much confusion right on the platform. But we all want to move from God. And we want to know why we can't seem to get a breakthrough. I want to talk to you tonight about walking in your destiny. Walking in your destiny. Everybody in here has purpose. And if you want to stay doing nothing, you keep doing that. Amen. Because you'll never find true peace till you find your purpose in life. 
you'll never find true peace till you tap into your destiny. God put all of us here on the earth for purpose. Let me tell you something. God don't make no mistakes. I don't care if you was a gangster, gang, banger, thug, or been to prison, whore, whatever it is that you might have been, prostitute out there on the streets. I don't care what it is that you found yourself involved in. God had a purpose and a plan for you. Amen. Uh -huh. That's just the route that you had to take. I'm sorry. Amen. I know a lot of people would have loved to took the, the love boat, you know, tour. Amen. But see, everybody couldn't take the love boat tour. Somebody had to be a prostitute. Somebody had to be a liar. Somebody had to be a gangbanger. Somebody had, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell yeah, yeah. Won't you touch yourself and say, self, God pick you out for the road you traveled. Yeah, 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 yeah. God pick you out for that road. You know why? Couldn't nobody could have held that rating. Couldn't nobody could have went through what you went through and still came out in their right mind. Couldn't nobody could have went through what you went through as an alcoholic. See, some alcoholic folk, they died an alcoholic more. They couldn't even get free. They did, they, like she said to Harriet Tubman, say she, she, she freed a thousand slaves and she could have freed a thousand more, but they didn't know they were slaves. Ain't it sad for us to be on lockdown and we out in the free world and not know we locked down? Why? Because of all the decisions that we make, they're wrong. Being angry and unforgiving and not even knowing how to live a saved life. Don't even think before we speak. There's a lot of folk don't even think before they say something. They reveal just how stupid they are. Just sit around us long enough and find all the stupid people. You'll find them. You're wrong for saying that. There are some stupid people, though. It is. Amen. But I didn't say they was ignorant because ignorant and stupid is two different things. Ignorant, you can't do nothing with ignorant. At least stupid, you can teach them something. And y'all ain't figured it out yet. Ignorant can't do nothing. You can't do nothing with ignorant. Yeah. Ignorant done tried to learn and can't do nothing with it. At least stupid, you, you, if you slow it down and put them in the SDL class, they can learn something. It might take them 20 minutes to say the ABCs, but at least they'll get all of them right. Let me tell y'all something. This is not a joke, amen. How many people in here really, we go into church and we're talking about we're tired of being where we at. I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that. Well, number one, ain't nobody in here deep. You ain't deep. Amen. Ain't nobody here. Well, I wish he would teach something else. Why? You still ain't loving right. If I don't teach your number love till I die, you still ain't heard it all and ain't doing it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. He teach about the same thing. So, 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 if I'm teaching the same thing, it must be because we ain't ready to graduate and go on to the next stuff. What sense does it, you know what, that's that back in the day, see, I'm a little older than y'all, but back in the day, see, a football player and basketball players could be just as ignorant. They could be ignorant, not just stupid. They could be literally ignorant, amen, and wind up in the NBA and the NFL and running touchdowns and slamming balls and all that there, and by the time their career be over, they ain't got no more than when they started because they didn't know nothing. So you can't slip through like that no more. Yeah, your, your academics, you, by the time you finish your career, you'll at least be able to go get a job. Because they ain't letting you go through now just because you can run fast and jump high. Mm -mm. What I want to tell everybody is something. Don't be a, a person who think that you've been out of it. Let me get to my message, amen. Don't, don't think that. I want to talk about walking in your destiny, amen. Listen to this, amen. Listen to this. And while you're right there, turn to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Amen. When you get there, say amen. Ecclesiastes, what did I say? 12 and verse 13, what did it say? Read, but ready? Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And I don't care how many times I explain this to us. All we want to do is get Lamborghinis, Jets, and a fine woman. Amen. Let me get Lex Luger. Praise the Lord. I want him to be, yeah, I want Lex. Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. 
give me something good to look at and something not. Let me tell you something. That's not what time it is. Let me get a good paying job where I can make all the money I can make. Amen. That's not what time it is. Amen. The whole duty of man. You want to walk in your destiny. You want to walk in purpose. Find out what your duty is. And your duty is not to build up your own world and be selfish and be jealous of another man because he may have more than you. Can I tell you something? There's plenty of people going to always have more than us. When you think you're on the top, you're going to find out somebody was on top of you before you got there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What is the whole duty of a woman? It ain't for you to get out there and try to find no brother to love you and accept you. I can't find no. You know, let me tell you the wrong thing for any woman in her right mind to ever say is I can't find me a good man. And you never will. And you never will. I can't find me no good man. Well, what you looking for one for? That ain't your job. We got a lot of people doing jobs that not even there. You're hired on a, they didn't hire you. God did not employ you to go find no man. He didn't hire you to go put on your hottest little, tightest little outfit and walk up and down Fifth Avenue, Fifth Street, amen, or, or Nebraska to see who you can catch. Put on your hottest outfit to go to the club to see what man you can catch. Sashaying yourself around. Can I tell every fine woman something? If your body was the only thing that you had to offer that the cult, that man, and y'all ain't got to believe this, every sister that got it going on ain't had enough birthdays yet, everything where it need to be. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Keep living. If the brother you got is with you because you use all of your sexual uh, 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 accoutrements to, to, to capture him, amen, baby, after a while, if you don't got no kids, keep having babies, amen, scratch marks coming, you're going to gain some weight, oh yes you are, everything that once was out of tension going to be out of ease, amen, you just keep living, just watch what I'm telling you now, and, 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 and if all you had was that, you ain't finna keep him. I'm trying to tell somebody something right now. While you out there trying to shop around, amen, you better be trying to fix up what's on the inside of you, amen. So what your beauty will be will be not what's on the outside because you need to know my greatest attribute, well, my greatest attribute, you can't even see, my brother. I know you're looking at that and that's what you want, but my greatest attribute is inside of me what I have to offer. You might want your old fine brother too. You know, he ain't got no weight on him, old washboard stomach. Oh, washboard stomach rip. Just rip. Every, on a washboard, every line rip. Old brother with old washboard stomach, no love, handles, no nothing. Muscles all down. He got muscles on top of his muscles. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I'm going to tell you something. If, if he don't uh, keep eating barley and, 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 and asparagus, and get married and find them a good wife that's cooking. And, no, 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 no. A good woman going to fatten you up. A good woman going to I don't care how you had it going on. Uh, unless you're going to be showing up discipline all your life. And I doubt it. Amen. You're going to say, you know what? I'm getting a little old. Now I'm going to enjoy this gravy and rice. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be staying on this diet. Because to keep it all together like that, you, you cannot eat whatever you want to eat and keep it like that. So I'm not even going to be committed to that. I'm going to try to take care of myself. And I may not be a rub bowl, but I'm a tub bowl. Hallelujah. Just a little bit more of me to love. Praise the Lord. Now, I ain't going to go crazy with it, but neither am I going to be eating uh, salad every time I go somewhere. I'm going to get me some cheesecake. Get me some bluebell ice cream. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. I ain't finna be sitting up here. Y'all laughing. It's the gospel of truth. I'm not finna sit around here and be talking about you. What you want? I, I take some salad. Now, can I get them, them, them buffalo wings? How many you want? 10, 12, or 10, 20 of them. And if I don't eat the 20, I'll box the rest of them up and I'll heat them up tomorrow in the oven. They taste a whole lot better. Amen. But right now, bring all 20 of them. Somebody say amen. Y'all see what this word say? What is your whole duty? It ain't for you to be out there to be a kingpin. Your whole duty is that we obey God and keep his commandments. And one of the commandments is honor those who have the rule over you. Respect your pastor. Respect each other. Amen. We can't go nowhere because of a lack of respect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I ain't never seen such a time, and it couldn't be in my house. I promise you it couldn't be me. Amen. Because even with save and the Holy Ghost, that probably couldn't keep me. Because I couldn't have a son in my house, amen, that think he can whoop me. 
I can't get no help. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Y'all just have to come get me out of jail. I'm just telling you right now. I ain't going to have nail son walk around in my house, drinking my juice, eating my Captain Crunch, sleeping on my sheets, using my washing machine, and washing his face with my water. And using my soap. And you're going to get out the shower and sit at the table, put your feet bigger than mine at my table, and disrespect me? I'd knock the taste out of his mouth. And if he think he can do something with me, we just have to find out. Because I ain't finna have a nail child. See, children now, young boys especially, they got these nasty attitudes at home. But see, a real man ain't having it. A lot of young boys think they bad. But I'm telling every young person in here that think you bad, you just ain't ran up on no real man yet either. Because when a real man get hold to a boy, first thing he be saying is, Dad, it's your son. No, not that, that. just a few minutes ago, you were somebody outside. I can't get no amen in here because y'all think it's a game. I wouldn't have a daughter. I couldn't have, if I was a female, which I'm not. But ain't nowhere in the world I can see some girls, how they talk to their mama and raise their, talking to me and you talking louder than me in my house? Come on, girl, you supposed to be eating soup for a long time. Ain't nothing you supposed to be able to eat. No, no, nothing that got any meat to it. Nothing. Oatmeal be hard to eat. Y'all say he very violent. No, I'm very orderly. Amen. A child supposed to stay in a child's place. And when they get out of their place, somebody supposed to be there to put them in check. And put them there quick too. The quicker you put them in check, the next time you look at them, uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm about to come back over there. And I know y'all feeling me, amen. I'm talking about walking in your, they can't walk in your destiny in your house out of order. Can't, can't nobody leave the church. Can't nobody leave their house and their house all tore up. Everybody doing what they want to do. This just good preaching. This, this ain't the kind of preaching you want to hear, but this is the kind of preaching that'll get you into the kingdom. This kind of preaching to have your house lining up. Just like some children can remind the parents what I said, some of you parents ought to be listening. So when they be when they when they when they tooth be loose, you can say, You remember when Pastor said? I can't get no help. You know why? Because here we are in a time now where ever let me tell you something. I done said it before, you just gotta keep saying it over. Never have I ever seen a time when mothers want to be their girl, their daughter's best friend. The devil is a lie. How you gonna be your daughter's best friend? Best friends cuss each other out. Best friends fall out and do everything. Fit to be your best friend, I'm your mama. That's closer than a best friend. So why you want to be a best friend? I want to be close to my child. Couldn't be no closer. You carry the nine months. How much closer you want to get? Y'all laughing? Because it's so true. Then we wonder why nobody want the church. Nobody can have no order in the church because all of us in here want to be grown. Let me tell y'all something. In God's house, there's order. In the Sunday school manual, we read it every week that thou may that that thou may know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. You can't come in here and act any kind of way and bring your stinking attitude up in here and think that God happy with it. What is the whole duty of man? To get their house in order and love God? Everybody that love God going to get their house in order. Everybody that love God will get their house in order. The whole duty of man. I'm tired of going to church. Well, you don't want to go to heaven because the whole duty of man is to go to church. Honor God. This is what we live to do. Huh? I get happy when I think about church. I get happy when I know we all supposed to come together and see each other. I get happy when I think about I'm going to be able to bring a word tonight. All I can think about today but you know what? In a little while, I'm going to be able to share the word of God with the people of God. I was talking with a pastor today. He said, man, do you know, before you left Koji, he said, I can't remember who told me this. He said, and some of y'all going to agree because y'all done been to Tampa with me when I had to preach the time they put me up. He said, man, I can't remember what Koji preacher told me this. Huh? He said, but Pastor Hall, when you left Koji, he said, they told me this before you left. Anytime they knew you were going to be preaching, they said, well, come on in here because we finna get a word tonight. Preachers and all, he finna preach to all of us. Everybody need a preacher. I need a preacher. I don't need nobody to play with me. If I'm messed up, I need you to help me straighten up. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't need that there. I don't, if I'm wrong, I don't need you to play with See, when I come to church, look, I don't know, I don't know who in here, it don't take a good little while to get ready to come to church. But it take me a little minute to get ready. 
Amen, Sister Hall. Amen, Sister Hall. Great, didn't it take me a little minute to get here? Because when I come, I'm going to make sure I'm on point. Amen, I'm not coming. See, I don't know how some folk want to come to church. I come to church like I'm going somewhere. Huh? Uh, that's right. When I come, I want, I want to make sure my hair lay. I don't want no hair sticking up like Spanky. No, no, I want to brush it good. I want the waves, I want the waves to be laying down. I want to make sure I didn't pick out the wrong color socks. They need to be blue. I came to church the other week and y'all let me come up in here like that. <laughs> Didn't nobody say nothing. I had a navy blue coat on with, with but the fact it was this coat. But but they'd see a match, but it wasn't what I wanted to wear. I got on some this the pants to go with this suit. And I had on some black pants, and I'm, I'm just a strutting, but I'm thinking I got it going on. Not knowing I done pulled the wrong stuff out. Y'all didn't know it, though. My wife didn't know it. Nobody didn't know it. I, I, I looked down, and I said, Lord, I got the wrong pants on. <laughs> y'all laughing at me? <laughs> y'all, I did, praise the Lord. Let me tell y'all something. The whole duty of man, look at here, is that we come in here to learn how to love God. If we learn how to love God, the church will grow. People will join. It will make a difference. This young lady that joined the church in the back, she, she told me, I hope she'll mind me sharing this. So I had two churches decide whether or not that I wanted to join, Pastor Hall. And I won't say the other church, but it was two that she was indecisive about joining. But she said one thing she did know, and I, re and I repeat her, and I quote. She said one thing I want to do, I want to grow in God. Isn't what you told me, baby? She said, I want to grow in God. And I made my decision. I believe here with you, I'm going to grow. Amen. And you will if you come in here. Amen. You will not stay the same if you really come in here to grow. Amen. Now, you may not like everything I say, and you're going to be kind of hurt some Sundays, but I heard evangelist uh, Stephen say, hurt me now. Amen. Hurt me now so I can be saved later. Amen. I'd rather get hurt right now. Amen. So I can be saved later. Don't be talking about I'm hard. Pastor Hall, he hard over there. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm a no, no, no. If, 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 if a preacher will let you just live in sin, live any kind of way you want to live with no rebuke, y'all just heard that girl say, what has happened to rebuke and living right and seeking after God? What has happened to that? Ain't nobody looking for that. But there are some people looking for that, though. But let me tell you something who hard. I'm going to tell you who hard. The preacher who hard is the one that will know you're homosexual, will not touch you, will not say anything to you. Preacher who know you shacking and will not say nothing about you shacking. Preacher who know you a big liar but will not touch on lying. Amen. Preacher who know you gossip all the time but he won't never talk about that now that's the preacher that's hard because he know you're going to hell I'm easy amen because I'm going to tell you the truth so you can make a logical decision about what you need to do to determine where you're going to spend your eternity because everybody that die ain't going to heaven some of us got people in our families we know they're just as lost they love barbecue sauce baby you done been around long enough and they lost as barbecue sauce they lost Amen. They just lost. And you be trying to share the good news with them and tell them, hey, you're wrong. They don't want to hear that. But let me tell you something. I've been living long enough now to see young people on this platform. Y'all hear this. I've been living long enough right now to see the results of people who did not listen to what I had to tell them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've been living long enough to see it. I've been long enough to see the, the axe come down and chop them dead at the root. Amen. Why? Because when you were young and should have been listening, amen, we didn't want to listen. And the Bible says that the ways of a transgressor is hard. Meaning that you're going to be disobedient. Can't nobody correct you. Correction has to come. Or you a bastard child. It's quiet there. Let me roll on a little further here. Let's look at, let, let's look at this destiny. Let, let's look at Joshua 1. Let's flip over there real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Joshua 1. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Ready? Read. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward 
the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Let me tell you something. The study was done on all of this geographical land that the father was talking about he would be giving. And the study, this, this land that he was giving to, the, to Joshua and the children of Israel, it was so vast that you could not, I mean, it was just, it was just too much to even imagine. That from, the, from the Mediterranean to your Euphrates and all this, all of that, but you, this coast that he was talking about, it was so much land, amen. It's like Russia, amen. Russia, they had so much land that's not, and Alaska as well. You know, Alaska has so much, Alaska got so much land that's not inhabited. You know, nobody, and then you got some folk on TV now wants to go and, and find something in a place where nobody ain't never been. But, but. One thing for sure, ain't none of us, amen, and I ain't going, hallelujah, I ain't going nowhere a plane can't go, hallelujah, I'm going where a car can't drive, if I got to have cleats and, and snowshoes and all that and, and ropes and all that, that wasn't meant for me to go, Jesus didn't mean for me to go there, but are y'all hearing what I'm saying, <laughs> don't you go nowhere like that there? Hallelujah. If you got to go in with, with, with lights all on your head and ropes all on your back. No, no, man. We got highways and sidewalks. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all made. But listen, listen to me good. Listen to me good. He said this land was so vast that God was talking about giving his people that you couldn't even imagine. Your eyes couldn't even, you couldn't, it, it was just too vast. He said, this is what I want to give to you. When you're in your destiny, God had promised this to the children of Israel before they went into captivity. Can I tell you things God want to give to us before we even went into slavery? You understand? There's things that God just want to give us. When you're in your destiny, God already done got things planned for us. Do y'all really understand the job that you really want, the house that you're supposed to live in? You really already, y'all ain't going to understand it. You really already got everything that you're really supposed to have in your lifetime. You already got it. It's already yours. Amen. All you're waiting on is time and destiny to hook up. And when you're walking in the divine order of God, God's going to get you there. He may not get us there as fast as we want to get there, but if you stay on the king's highway, you're going to get there eventually. He said, listen, everywhere the soles of your feet tread. When, when you're walking with God the way that you're supposed to walk, everywhere you go, you're blessed. Everywhere you go. People, anybody ever got that kind of favor on you that everywhere you go, people seem to like you? I mean, everywhere you go, people just seem to like you. I mean, it ain't, it ain't nothing special about me. It's just that, you know, I'm in the will of God for my life. And God give you favor with people. God give you favor with people. Some people have took a long time to accomplish what you've accomplished. It didn't take you long. You know, they told you it was going to be eight months before you got the money. They told you it was going to be X amount of time before this happened. And look at here, lo and behold, bam, look at there. You walk right on into it. They told you the check was going to be cut off. Ain't no more unemployment. You went to praying and the president came on TV and said, we're going to extend unemployment six more weeks. Y'all, did, did you just hear what I just said? Uh, come on, y'all don't believe that? Tell your neighbor, say, God did that for me. Yeah, God did that for me. Because he know, he know, he know I wouldn't know what we were going to do. If they're talking about cutting the check off, I'm not there. Oh. He's going to force me back into my old tricks. Because I know how to make some money. It ain't right, though. <laughs> But I ain't going to steal nothing. <laughs> Amen. Read a little more. Read a little more. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Do y'all realize when you're in your destiny, people are afraid of you? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? When you're in your destiny, people are afraid of you. When you're walking like you're supposed to, people are really, you know, they're afraid of you. Why? Because they think you're crazy, number one. Yeah, because everybody else talking normal. You're not talking normal. You're talking faith, and you're talking about one day God going to, and you're talking like that. And right now, if they're looking at where you at right now, they say, this, this girl crazy. Yeah, you better get back in the game. I am in the game. I'm a game changer. Amen. God done flipped the script for me. Amen. I ain't going back out there to hustle and live. I know God is a way maker. I know he will. Amen. It may not come like I want it. Amen. But it's always on time. Praise the Lord. God going to make sure my light's on. God going to make sure the mortgage paid. God going to make sure these things. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. But I just got to stay with God. Even when the money gets slack, I got to trust God in spite of where the money at. Huh? I got to stay with God even when it don't look like it's working. Tell your neighbor, say, when it look like it ain't working, it's really working. Y'all didn't say that like you meant it. When it look like it ain't working, it's really working. But you know what we want? Sometimes we just want too much. And sometimes God got you in a season of lack. I, I, I believe that God put people in lack sometimes just to show you 
you can get by on a lot less. You didn't need all that there. Now, now, and I believe he got you there. So now, when you start coming back up, when the preacher asks him for more money or they need to do something, you're going to be able to give it because you know that you can make it on a whole lot less. So God had to break you down. Because it was a time you get mad if they ask for $50. Somebody say, walking in your purpose. He said, no man won't be able to stand before you. And, when, and let, let, me, let me educate you ladies. Whenever you see man, don't even get afraid of what he's not talking to you because there is no gender in God. We all spirit beings. So when they say, ain't no man going to be able to stand before me, ain't going to be no woman able to stand before me either because when I've got my God on my side, amen, I can move mountains. I can take a little bit and make it scratch. Anybody ever been there? Make a meal scratch. One thing them old people back, you see, we, we too modern now. Old folk know how to make stuff scratch. They'll make a pack of chicken last a week. And they'll cook it five different ways all week. you think you got something new. Hallelujah. Bake it, fry it, stew it. <laughs> That's four days right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You think you done had something different. But God is just a, a creative. Somebody say he's creative. Read a little more book. As I was with Moses. Uh-huh. So I will be with thee. Tell your neighbor, say, he's going to be with you. Now, let me tell you something. Y'all ain't getting happy about that because most of the time, we're not living in a way for God to really walk with us. Can I tell you something? It's a difference in God walking with you and just giving you general protection. See, general protection is for everybody. I want y'all to know that. He protects everybody. Whether you be saved or unsaved. The grace, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. I, I, I make it shine on the just as well as the unjust. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So let's not get all happy because we think we live in wrong but God with us. Because he with everybody. You just don't want to die in that state. Read a little more for me. I will not fail thee. I, listen, when you're in your destiny, when you in, and let me tell you something, you might have just came in. Don't even worry about that. Because one thing about it, if you just came in and you mean business, he don't promise you in the world. Y'all don't got to get happy about this. You just came in last. Amen. And don't think that it's for you right now. Oh, yeah, that's for me right there. Because I read in the Bible, he's going to flip the script. Amen. Those that come in last going to wind up being first. Amen. And those that were once first, they're going to be in the back. Amen. So he say, I'm going to be with you. Let me tell y'all something. God, the, God has not left us just because things get tough. But I tell you what I'm learning, honey. This is what I'm learning. A lot of times, when you got a few extra dollars, amen, God want to put you in a place where you understand how money really works. Because we really don't know how money works. We really don't. Let me tell you something. I feel the very presence of God. See, God will put you in a place to make you really understand because I've said it before, and some, sometimes you not be ready to hear it, but maybe one or two more ready to receive this. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of things we do with money that's not necessary. You do not have to have a number one. You do not have to have a number two. You got soup and something at the house. Drive and wait till you get all this that you need something to fill that hunger spot. Your two, three dollar, five dollar, six dollar. Don't be going and giving that stuff to Mike. That's unhealthy anyway. Go on, on, get you a loaf of bread and some, some something and take home and, and, and fix you some toast and something. And, and, and yes, and get by. And keep your soul five dollars. Are you hearing? Please, no music. And keep your money. Keep what God is trying to show you what to do. And every day you ain't got to go nowhere. Every day you want to hop in your car. I'm, I'm riding to see my mama. What for? Call your mama. No, I'm serious. Gas, three dollars and something a gallon. But you got to go somewhere every time you're home for, let's just ride for what? Let's go sit out on the porch. I just feel like riding. You feel like going to the gas station? Because that's where you're going. And listen, no matter how you teach it, preacher to say it, some of us going to stay right where we're at because we do things that's unnecessary. We spend money in places that don't need to be spent. Well, I got to take my family. So why? Well, we ain't never really went to so-and-so. It's a lot of places in the world you ain't never went. Yeah, you're saying that like, I ain't never went to uh, 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 the Kumbala. Well, it, it, it's plenty of stuff in the world you ain't going to go see. I don't understand that. You know what I've noticed about us and we be broke? 
I ain't never seen broke folk go on vacation. Broke folk, broke folk on vacation. Took your bill money, took your money that you pulled to been paying folk with and you up here at the Holiday Inn somewhere. You, you, you done hit the road and went out of state on these people money that you should have been paying so that you wouldn't have to be getting evicted, so you wouldn't have to be in, a, in the shape that you... No, all ain't got to say, nobody ain't got to clap for that. Black folk, we do some of the... I just, you know what, so I just watch us. I just, I just sit back and tell, you know what? Lord, I don't want to be a jigaboo. I don't want to be a jigaboo. I don't want to keep living and have never lived. Can I tell you something? All you little two, three dollars, what we talking about, where we going somewhere? Baby, why don't you save your money? Save for three, four years and take your trip to Paris. Save your money and go on a real, I'm going, y'all know the little trip y'all go to. And I'm going up to Daytona. We taking the family up here for the weekend. We renting something on the beach. You can go to the beach on Saturday. Just ride up there and come back. I don't tell you, I watch us. And right now I'm still watching people. I'm watching people make some of the dumbest decisions with money that you could ever make. Even in their life. We make decisions based on emotions and what we think and not what we know. This is, listen, listen to what we say. Listen, listen now. Listen, this is what we say. Well, if I do this, I think and I believe it's going to be better. Yeah, but is that what God's saying to do? No, 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 no. And don't come, and a lot of folk be talking about, well, God said, I don't, I don't been around long enough to realize everybody that told me that God told him to do it was lying. God said, God told me to do this here. How God led you into the wilderness? You, you was in a place of safety. Everything was going good for you. Not, not everything breaking all down around you. Your family done left you. The dog done left you. The fish don't even come up to the top of the tank to eat. Because you standing by. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Everything broke down. God ain't taking you from a place of safety now because everywhere he go, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of God, he's still going to be he's still going to be close. And if you ain't getting that, God ain't saying that. God didn't take you to no place to strip you down. To be, you worse, wait a minute, you left where you were struggling a little bit to go where you're sure enough doing bad. Now, God's trying to talk to some people right now. But a lot of times when God trying to talk because our minds already has made the plans and we know what we're going to do and I'm convinced. Yeah, the Bible says you know, persuaded yourself to believe a lie. Everybody who's about to do something already to convince themselves it's going to be better. Can't get no help. But when you're walking in your promise, God will send a word to you to say, hey, hold up. You, listen, you might want to revisit your position. You might just want to revisit your position. You might, you, might, you might be heading off the edge of the cliff. Because, you know, Satan has a way of making things look so sweet until you get out there. Then you get out there and he withdraw himself. And then he said, you so stupid. You know I was the devil. No, you didn't. You didn't know it. You thought that was God. A lot of people confusing, confusing Satan's voice with God's because they both talk. You do know that, right? And, they, and, and, and Satan do hang out around Jesus when he led him. I do know that, right? It was a day when the sons of God went to meet with God. And when they got to meet with God, Satan had somehow came up to heaven and was in the PTA meet. And Jesus talked to him when he got up. He said, hey, what you doing up here? He said, where have you been, Satan? Satan talked back to God. So he said, I've been searching to and fro, seeking whom. Let me tell y'all something. Right now, that's a revelation for somebody right there. He's seeking whom he may devour. I'm going to tell you what love would do for you. I'm going to tell y'all something. Listen closely. Don't let nothing distract you right here. Love will always call you back. Before you make a disaster out of it. Love. Love will always call you back. 
Jesus loved you so that if you're really listening to him, even when you thought you heard from him, if you're really listening, he'll confirm some things that you might not want to hear. You hear what I'm saying? He said, when you're walking in your purpose, Ted, listen, I'm going to be with you. And just because things got rough where you're at don't mean that God left you. Do you know the litmus test? The litmus test to know whether or not you're in the will of God is based on how much trouble you're in. Because if you ain't in no trouble, the odds of you being with God is slim to none. Because you can't follow God and not be in trouble. And see, a lot of folk gauging what they need to do based on the trouble that they're in to say God is angry, God done forgot. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He said, if they've done it unto me, they're going to do it unto you. Huh? And he said, anyway, listen at the qualifications, y'all, if you, when you're in purpose. I'm talking about your destiny now. Listen at the qualifications. Except you deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Honey, a lot of us don't want to pick up no cross, though. See, when the cross come, we're trying to find a way to give money. That's my sweetheart. I love myself some shit. Amen. She's so sweet. Praise the Lord. She's so sweet and hard, working out at things and got a little rough, you know, you know, and, and, and it's things that she won't, but we can't get right now. So, so I'm going to try it. Amen. Amen. She, she want to she wanna help God. That, that, that's, our, that's our nature is to try to help God. Well, I'm going to help God so I can get what I need. But let me tell you something. No, no. God is saying, suffer right there. Just stay right there. And let me tell you something. A lot of times God say, I'm the one going to bring you out. I don't really need your help. If you just wait on me. Now, I'm not telling nobody. Listen to what I'm not saying. Because some people hear something crazy just then. I am not saying if you're not working, you don't have no income coming in, that you could just sit around and pray and believe God and money going to come falling in through the window. You got to bake some pies. You got to, you know, whatever you do, baby, whatever you do. If, if, you cook, if you cook chitlins real good, tell them this Sunday I got chitlin dinners. I'm selling, I'm selling chitlin dinners. I got little packs of hot sauce for the broke folk. I got, I got, I got uh, condiments. I'm not telling you to sit around and don't do nothing because the Bible says they that wait. And that kind of wait that he's talking about, I didn't explain it to you before. They that wait upon the Lord. He's not talking about waiting, being still, doing nothing. But he's talking about that type of wait like at a restaurant. You have a waiter. And what are waiters doing while they're getting paid? They're moving and they're making things happen. Amen. Why are they waiting? But a lot of times, God have us in a place, amen, where we are living and we are making it, amen, but we just want the extras that we're accustomed to having, but right now we just can't have them. Let me tell you something. Can I bless y'all? Pay close attention to me. Whatever you're doing, please listen. Best teaching in the world you're getting right here. Check this out. You don't learn nothing if you're suffering and you help God, and you help God take you out. Paul's message has no effect for you. Paul said it best like this. He said, when I had a lot of money, I was happy having it my way. He said, but when, but when money ran out and I become a base, I didn't go out there trying to do nothing extra. He said, I learned how to be a base and I've learned how to be a bound. But in all things, in all circumstances, I've learned how to give God praise and just wait on God to do what he's going to do. Because God is faithful. He, won't, he told you in the story, he said, I'm going to always be with you. I'm with you when, when you're right. And let me tell you something. L listen at this. And I know you don't want to believe it, though. Uh, this is pathetic for some of us. And God even be with you when you're wrong. He just with you. Because he, oh God, let me break that down to you. What you mean? He, no, a good parent, mm, a good parent don't just love their child because their child doing good and on the honor roll every week. Right. A good child loved their parents when they got thrown out of school. They whooped their behind though. But we don't throw them out because they get, uh, uh, do things. No, wrong. We with them when they good and we with them. Okay. And if we being wicked, Know how to give good gifts. How much more? Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. How much more is God with us? Yeah, yeah. That's why we should want to be in sin because he love us. And he's trying to get us to a set place. Everybody up here got a set place that God's trying to take them. Whether they want to go or not. 
I'm asking people all the time, what do you want to do with your life? Anybody ever thought about that? What do you want to do with your life? What, 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 what of it we have left? Well, if you're young, you got your whole life in front of you. What do you really want to do with it, though? Huh? If, you, if you're getting up in age, surely you ain't in your 30s and still not knowing what you want to do. I don't know. Good God. I don't, I don't know. Why you did that? I don't know. Don't that just upset you? When, when, when you ask for, what, why did you do that? And the, the answer they give you is, I don't know. I don't know. That ain't the right kind of answer. And when I hear them kind of answers, it make me wonder. Yeah, yeah. You did it, but you don't know why you robbed the bank. Don't say you don't know. Say, I needed some money. I mean, if you want to rob a bank, man, sir, why did you, sir, could you please tell the court why you robbed the bank? I don't know. Now, if they interview me and I don't robbed it, sir, could you tell me why you robbed the bank? Listen, I've been on a fast for a couple of days because I've been praying for God to help me, but it didn't look like he was working. So, I came in this bank. Y'all wasn't going to give me no money, so I had to take it because I got to eat. I ain't finna tell y'all, I don't know. That makes you look stupid. I ain't robbing the bank and don't know why I'm in here. I need some money. I ain't right that. Thank you, mama. Don't, 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 don't. You know, people make it. We make ourselves look stupid. Uh, why did you shoot them? I don't know. I shot them because I thought they were trying to shoot me. Why you shot them? I thought they had something in the hand. I don't know. But I'm going to get you first. I ain't never going to be sitting back to my own. No. I know everything I done done. Why I done it? I don't know. I don't know really mean you do know you're just saying that. Let me tell y'all something. When you're walking in the will of God for your life, you know everything what you're doing because God leading you. I'm, I'm being led by God even as I talk to y'all tonight. God is leading so that you can get simple truths and begin to know better than to be saying stuff that don't make sense. Read a little more. Hurry. Nor for I got eight me. minutes. Uh, verse six. Be strong and of a good courage. Wait a minute. Be strong and of a good courage. Four, Go ahead. Four and two. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. See, when, when you walk in with God, it's just good to have some people that love God walk in with you. Because if right. they with you, when you get to the promise, y'all going to split the goods. Split you see, God has a plan to bless folk. God is in the bless me business. Now, I don't think he's not. But now, he's not some genie in a bottle that you just stroke him and he comes out and give you wishes and you living like the devil. But God do not want his children begging. I have a problem with that. Because if, 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 if he wanted us to beg, then David wouldn't have penned the song. He said, I've been young and I've been old. But one thing I've never saw. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or I've never even saw their children begging. No, 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 no. The only reason why we would be begging and doing things contrary to God is because we're not walking in the divine will of God, the purpose for our life. Because we know that the Bible is true. We know that that's true. And if there's any contradiction in the word and it's not happening for us in our lives, it's because we're not in the right place with God. I'm here to tell every married person this. Hear me. And if you're single, don't be in a hurry to get married. I'm trying to tell you now. Because married folk have to go through a whole lot. Huh? Why? A lot of give and take. A lot of give and take. A lot of times you have to do things you don't want to do, brother. Hallelujah. Just for the sake, because you're married. You know what I mean? A lot of times you have to make personal sacrifices. A lot of times you might want to raise your voice, but it pay you better just to lower your voice and buy flowers. Amen. Give her a kiss and say, honey, I love you. You're so sweet. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. Everybody who married is supposed to be living in a utopia. A paradise. And that's with struggle. Struggle should not dictate whether or not when I come in through my doors at my house, the atmosphere in my house is not one of royalty and peace. Because everything outside my door has nothing to do with where I'm going with God. And if we allow it to come into our homes and affect us, your family problem, your children problem, and all your problems, affecting the way that you are operating inside your home, you have given what's outside your home more power than what it deserves. should always be a sweet atmosphere in the saint's house. And if you're single, your house shouldn't be a house of contention where you're lonely all the time. 
It's too much Bible for you to be reading. Too much prayer, too much nursing home. Too many sick folk you can go visit. There's too much you can do to occupy your time. Hmm? You ain't no such thing as a bored Christian. A bored Christian is one that ain't reading the Bible. You ain't read it from, from beginning to back, from front to back. Read the Bible. You'll find help in it. And every married person need to know, God didn't put us in, in a relationship to be arguing and fussing, hollering and screaming. And then our children see all of this confusion going on in the house. And then we wonder why our kids grow up and they dysfunctional. You get a dysfunctional man and a dysfunctional woman, you're going to have a little children that's dysfunctional. Because all they ever saw was dysfunction. You take two stable people walking with God full of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not going to say your children ain't going to never make no mistakes, but I promise you this. You can't have two parents loving God and nothing but the Holy Ghost been operating in them since their children been small, since they've been the small kids, amen, and then they grow up and just be hell raisers. Mm -mm. Those kids eventually going to come to Christ. Y'all ain't, ain't saying nothing. I know it's true. The Bible says it's true. Train them up. When you're in purpose, see, everybody that's walking in their purpose, they don't live by their own set of rules. And what bothers God, because it bothered me when I pray, Lord, I want to hear This bothers him is that we say we following him, but the manual right there telling you what you're supposed to be doing. And you don't do it. But this is how I'm going to handle it. Don't you know it ain't going to work? Read verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, uh -huh. that thou mayest observe to do according to to all the law. You can't, you, you can't move until you start doing it all, saints. You know what I'm hearing people say? We ain't perfect. That's a lie. That's a lie when you say you're not perfect. I'm going to say that again. I'll break that down for you. Ain't nobody perfect. That's a lie when we really say that, though. Ain't nobody perfect. Because we really are perfect. Because the only thing that really goes into the kingdom is things that are perfect. And how do we get perfect? Through the blood of Jesus. See, what the blood really does, it covers a multitude of sins. Now, that's not a license to sin, but it makes you perfect in the eyes of God. Because when God sees the blood, he don't see no wrong. Y'all don't like it. It's still the truth, though. When God sees the blood, he don't see no wrong. That's a perfect person under the blood. And y'all ought to be happy about that. God ain't let nothing in the kingdom ain't perfect. Read. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Uh-huh. Turn not from it to the right hand. Or to the left. The problem why we can't stay in our divine calling is because we get tired of church too quick. Come to church a couple times during the week. You think you done gave God enough? I'm, I ain't going back. I done had enough God. How you done had enough God when you know you still borderline schizophrenic with God? How you got enough of God? You know you borderline? The more, the more, let me tell y'all something. The, the longer I spend time with God and on my face praying, Lord, you know, Help me to be a husband because I don't know how to be one. Help me to be a pastor because I don't know how to be one. Let me tell y'all something. Even a friend, brother, I said, Lord, help me to be somebody's friend. You know why? Because I really don't even know how to be anybody's friend. Because you know what I found out about friends? Just by me taking on people who call themselves my friends, friends ain't no good. I ain't going to get no claps because a lot of y'all tell people you their friend. You their friend, but you put your mouth on them behind their back. What kind of friend is that? We don't, even know how, we don't even know how to be a person's friend. Friends ain't trying to hurt their friends. And because you talked about, well, they don't know I talked about, what kind of schizophrenic friend are you? You're a schizophrenic friend. You don't need to be my friend. We riding in the car and you, you trip out. I'm going to take everybody. The devil is a lie. I can't take it no more. You've been dealing with too many voices. Yeah, you done been there? I pray, Lord, help me to show me how to be a friend. That I'll keep my mouth closed. You know what I'm saying? That I won't feed into stuff that I don't need to feed into. I don't know how to be nobody's friend. And the only reason why I can tell y'all these things is because I've done it. And most people won't get up and tell you that. I've done that. I'm your friend, but I'm saying something about you that ain't right. Yeah, y'all look around and go to the church where they playing like this ain't real. It's real. And half of us in here right now call ourselves loving each other. We each other friends. And I ride or die for you. You know you wouldn't. You'll ride, but take the die off. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to ride because we're trying to get away from trouble. I ride or die for you. Mm -hmm. You know that's a lie. We ain't going to die. We too busy trying to live. We need to learn from God, though. I promise you, I say, I, I was like that. I'm getting better now. And I, I, I don't found something out too. When you start praying like what I just prayed, say, Lord, help me to be a friend, what God basically does then is just get you from around everybody. That's what he do. Because he know you ain't going to be right to nobody. Amen. Because it's a show as you get with friends and you got friends and something go down, you're going to have something to say. So what he do? Just separate you from everybody. Put you on the Isle of Patmos. Or you'll be out there by yourself. He said, I ain't got no friends. You know why? Because you don't know how to be a friend. It's simple. I, I, I can't hang around nobody. You know why? Because you don't know how to be around people. Don't nobody want them. No, 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 I don't want to be around you because you don't know how to be a friend. Because friends hurt each other. And real friends don't do that. Because Jesus said, there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is my friend. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He my Savior. Ever. Mm -hmm. That's my friend. I'm praying every day that God make me better because I need some help. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all ain't the only ones trying to walk this journey and do the right thing. It ain't the easiest thing being a Christian. Amen. It really not. I wish, can I get an amen from back here? Amen. And especially from these guys about this age up here. It ain't easy being a Christian because they really don't understand too much of nothing. And I'm not belittling them. They just don't. They're too young to know anything. I don't care what the young people got to say. You don't know nothing. You, you 20 years old and back, 21 and old, you don't know nothing. And I'm not saying you, you just don't know nothing. You haven't, you haven't lived enough in the earth to know a whole lot. The only way you learn stuff is through experience. That's how you learn. Because a lot of things that you decide today that you wouldn't do, and you, I don't, no, 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 live, keep living a little longer. I wouldn't do that. No, just keep living, just keep living. Because a lot of things that you say you wouldn't do, you get a little bit older, you'll find out, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, you, yeah, mm, how you did that? I thought you wouldn't do it. Uh -huh, you were judging me. Just keep living. Life is a teacher. The very things that you say you wouldn't do or you don't like make you mad right now, you look back at it years from now, you say, you know what, that was so immature and so childish. When God was trying to bless us, we were fighting one another. I just don't like this. Let me tell everybody something as I close. Church is not about what you like. Can I say that again? Church is not about what you like. This, we don't come together to get what we like. That's the problem that the church has. She said, these, 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 these pastors, she said, some of them, your pastor, jigaboos. They, they sheep, they wolf in sheep clothing. They won't preach the truth to you because they, they know that if they do that, the money. See, one thing about truth, truth, truth dry up money. It really does. When people hear truth and then they get angry, they don't want to bring no money to you. People will bring money when you don't preach them happy and they running around the church and kicking and bucking and crazy. I, I need about 50 people to come with $100. The line, boy, be, I got it, Pastor. I'm writing checks. Oh, I got it. You tell folk the flat out truth and say, you know what, today we're going to try to raise $1,000. Could I get about 15 people to bring me $25? Everybody glued to their seat. Is he talking to you? Is you got it? If I take him 25 after he just told me that about me, I'm not taking it up there. But if I preach you happy, you, I, the line will be out the door. And all I did was just pimp you to get your money and gave you some message that there's no substance I don't need a message where there's no substance. I need something like tonight. When y'all leave here, I'm sure that there's something you've heard tonight that you will encounter that you can use what I've said. Or you could tell somebody, what did he talk about? My purpose, my kingdom purpose, my kingdom agenda. I got, I got to be willing to obey all of what the preacher said. I got to do it all. I can't do hard, half of it. You know, I can't do it. I can't walk in disobedience and expect God to bless me. I can't do that. Here God is trying to rebuild our ministry. Here's God trying to do a lot of great things. Like I told him at the funeral, I'm not a hooper, but I can hoop. I'm not a teacher, but I can teach. I'm not a singer, but I can sing. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
I challenge you with this. Make a, make a decree with God that you want to walk in your purpose and your divine destiny. Then you will come out and pray like you ought to pray. Church, we don't pray like we used to. We don't fast like we used to. We don't do a lot of things like we used to. Because we think that it's a new church that we don't have to do it no more. But can I tell you what? If Lily Robinson and Charles Harrison Mason built one of the largest African-American church on the altar and on prayer and calling on the name of Jesus, uh, it still worked today. Call him like you need him. Call him like you want him. Call Jesus. Because he's the one that will make the difference in your life. Not church. You can come to church all of your life and never change. But you can never come to Jesus and stay the same. I promise you that. If you ever come to Jesus, I don't care how bad you want to go to the club, I don't care how bad you want to go out there and do wrong, your conscience will not allow you to go back out there and do it. I can't. I can't. I've been delivered. I've been set free. And I can't go back to that lifestyle anymore. I got to live now to please Jesus. Why don't you tell somebody to touch yourself and say, you've been so good with his good self. Amen. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building, praise the Lord. We're standing all over the building.